So have you guys ever been told that you're stupid? Or have you ever been looked at like you're dumb? Have you ever been prejudged or mislabeled? I know I have. One of the first examples was when I was in elementary school. For some context, I was born in Africa and moved to the US and was adopted when I was four years old. This meant I was playing a four-year catch-up game. From kindergarten to second grade, I had many teachers that would look at me and say, oh, she's probably not very bright in the head, or oh, she probably has a learning disability and needs special help. I remember how much I hated my reading class back then, because sometimes we were asked to read in front of the class, and at this point, I was just getting the concept of speaking English, which was confusing enough, and now I was expected to start reading it fluently. But all those assumptions that the teachers made about me were their own personal biases. And like them, I've had my fair share of being biased. I've entered classrooms or sports practices and prejudged someone's personality based on appearance or who they hang out with. And I think we can all agree, at one point or another, we've been biased towards a group or an individual. But what concerns me is how our biases are getting out of hand. Did you know that we are implementing our biases within technology? This is called algorithmic bias. It's the concept where we program our machines to be biased towards a certain age, gender, or racial group. For example, this is a picture of me and one of my best friends. Like many others, I love taking pictures with my friends. And if it's a special occasion, like let's say her birthday, I might want to post it for others to see. But what if I told you, if I had posted this on Twitter just a couple years ago, and the photo was too big that it had to be cropped down, it might have done something like this. It might have zoomed in on my friend and disregarded me. This, after all, is exactly what happened with Barack Obama and Mitch McConnell. In 2020, Twitter was getting a lot of complaints from its users, saying that its automatic photo cropping AI would emphasize or zoom in on white or lighter skin tones over black or darker skin tones. This, is be this be came about because the algorithm didn't have enough variety at different types of skin tones that didn't recognize different types of faces. So with the Barack Obama and Mitch McConnell, no matter where the two photos were placed, higher or lower, it would always zoom in on Mitch McConnell. Now, this is just one form of algorithmic bias. Algorithmic bias as a whole is this concept where we have our algorithms output systematic prejudice due to errors in the machine learning process. A really easy way that helped me understand this was in one of our classes, we got to use this website called code.org. And in this website, we got to, in a way, program our own AI to help clean the ocean or sea floors. It had us go through a series of images and just click on what was fish and what was trash. This is me doing it. Now, it had an infinite amount of pictures I could have gone through. I was lazy and stopped about after 100. Then once I ran the code, it was doing well for the most part, until it started hitting images such as crabs or seahorses. Since the animals, the seahorses and the crabs, didn't look like the other fish, the algorithm assumed that it was trash, so it threw it away. This is just like with the Twitter algorithm, it didn't have enough variety of different types of fish that it struggled to recognize different types of animals. So back to the Twitter algorithm. For now, they just took out the automatic photo cropping AI and let users self-crop their own photos. But we use algorithms in just about every area. For example, we have algorithms in the medical field. We have artificial intelligence that do calculations to see who's most likely to suffer from certain illnesses or who's going to be needing medical care. 
Now these are great for a number of reasons. It can handle a lot of information and can do it fast. But this can only go off of the data it is given. So let's say to figure out who's going to be in need of like certain, who's going to be sick of certain illnesses, they might use past healthcare spendings. But research from the Institution of Health Metrics and Evolution show that white people make about 72% of healthcare spendings, even though they only make 61% of the population. This is not because other races don't get sick as often. It's just because due to already existing racial disparities, other races can't afford as much health care. So since the data isn't getting true and accurate information, it's not outputting true and accurate results. Outside of the medical field, we also use algorithms in the justice system. We have information that tells who is most likely to commit a crime or what area is a high crime rate area, neighborhood. But sadly, all these have biases implemented within them. For example, let's say in one neighborhood, a lot of people, like a group of people, were convicted and go, are sentenced to jail. This would go into the data, and the data would output saying that it's a high crime rate area. So law enforcement might send more cops to patrol that area, which would then result in even more convictions. Which, was, which would result in the data saying it's an even higher crime rate area. But the data keeps getting information from the same neighborhood, disregarding all the other neighborhoods that might have just as high, if not higher, crime rates. This is a major flaw in our data that can drastically affect many people's lives. But in the end of the day, we can't blame our technology for this. It's our own personal biases that are being implemented within the technology. For example, within the justice system, research from the Innocence Project show that about 69% of people wrongfully convicted are due to false eyewitnesses. It's not because eyewitnesses intend to deceive or wrongfully convict a person. It's just because eyewitnesses are extremely vulnerable to distorting facts due to personal biases or beliefs. And this comes, out, comes about because our brains need shortcuts in life. On average, we receive about 11 million pieces of information per second. That is way too much for anyone to dissect. So about 90% of our daily decisions are made unknowingly, which then leads to a lot of biased actions. But we shouldn't just leave this to the unknown. It's already affecting just about everyone's lives. So a simple thing we can all do to help decrease our own biases is to be more self-aware. There are websites such as the Harvard Implicit Bias Test, which lets users take tests over different areas of common biases, such as age, gender, or race. There's another thing we can also do to help decrease our biases is to speak up. If the, algor if the Twitter users didn't speak up about the algorithms, no change would have been made to that data. Because at the end of the day, we can't keep letting the innocent crabs or other sea animals be thrown away because they don't look like the other fish. We can't keep letting our biases blind us.